Hi, everybody. Welcome back again. We've had a little bit of technical difficulties, but I think we're up and running again. So when you jump on, please say hi so we can know that this is all working okay. Can't see anybody on yet. Hi, everybody. We're just going to wait a minute. <clears throat> I don't know whether we're live. Here we go. I think it's working. Hi, friends. Let us know if uh, you can hear us okay, if everything looks good. We've uh, just had some technical difficulties, so I'm just trying to work this all out. <laughs> so give me some grace for a second. <clears throat> Welcome, everyone. Let me know if you're on and we can hear everything. Hey, here we go. Hi, I can see people joining. Welcome. I'm just sharing this uh, on my page, making it public so everybody can join the party. Oh, my husband, Kevin, is on <laughs> saying blame the Apple computer. <laughs> Can we extend our hands, folks, and, and pray for Kev right now? <laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome. So good to see everybody. All righty. Well, um, I'm just going to talk for a couple of minutes. Um, I'm just going to keep an eye on the comments just to make sure that everybody can hear us okay. Hi, everyone. Oh, that's good. I'm glad that it's clear. Um, yeah, I'm really excited about uh, this Facebook Live today. Um, God spoke to me last week and, uh, and told me that uh, he wanted us to do this Facebook Live. So I reached out to Matt and I said, hey, would you be willing to do this? And he was excited. So we're excited about what God is going to do. Hi, friends. Oh, here we go. Canada, Malaysia, Texas. Hi, everybody. It's so good to see you. Um, so uh, just before I uh, introduce Matt, I just want to say um, today, really, we just want to go, as always, with the flow of the Holy Spirit, see where he's going, what he wants to say. Uh, but really, um, I felt strongly that uh, just that Matt carries just a really significant key uh, for what God is, is going to release in 2019. Uh, so I'm not going to talk a whole lot about what I'm feeling God is saying for 2019. If you have been following the words I've been releasing, um, you will have already read a lot of that. Uh, we've got some Facebook Lives planned. Hi, everybody. Uh, we've got some Facebook Lives planned in the next two weeks, uh, really around um, the word God gave me uh like last week and I released it yesterday on strategy, divine strategy. So we're going to do some Facebook lives on that next week. Um, but really uh, today I, I really felt like there's something really beautiful that the Lord wants to release to you and minister to you through Matt. Um, so I want to encourage you just to be expectant and, uh, and just be asking the Holy Spirit just to speak to you and to minister to you. I know that it's going to be really powerful Hi. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm going to say this. I always say this. I apologize if I don't see your comment, um, but I do try and go back uh, later on to just read through and, and comment if I can. Uh, but I just apologize if I don't see them all. But it's just this is my corporate welcome. And it's great to have everybody on. Hi from New York, South Carolina. Oh, isn't technology a blessing? Here I am sitting in Queensland. In Australia, and we've got we're having a, a coffee together or a tea in my case because I've had a coffee today. Hey, Wisconsin, Gold Coast, Maryland, great to see everybody. Okay, without further ado, I'm going to introduce my friend Matt. This is uh, Matt Beckenham, uh, a dear, dear friend of uh, of Kevin and mine for a very long time. And Matt really, um, oh my goodness, I could say so much. He just has such a, a beautiful heart. Uh, for Jesus, his faithfulness, the purity of, of his heart and the word that he carries, um, the revelation God gives him is just, it's so fresh um, and I, we just love him and just, he's such an inspiration to us. So Matt, thank you for joining me. <laughs> <Excellent>. <laughs> um, 
do you want to just quickly just um, introduce yourself? I could do it, but I just really feel like um, it would be good for people to hear your heart and, um, and so, what you're doing and a little bit about you. So, so, yeah. so. thanks, Lana. Thanks for so, me to spend this time with you. And it's just wonderful to be able to have this kind of medium to, to speak into so many lives all over the world. Uh, yeah. You carry something. Uh, quite significant and quite unique and I'm just so blessed to be able to be uh, in this in this world with you and uh, to be able to encourage and support and stand beside and just want to thank all the listeners out there that are really got behind Lana too because uh, she is just very such a, a pure message and I just want to really bless her with what we're doing today as well but my name is Matt I come from a uh, like a Baptist church in Sydney Australia um, I've been pastoring in the church for about 15 years, um, married to a beautiful Texan girl, uh, Trish, and we're about to celebrate our 29th year of marriage. Wow. And so yeah, it's all pretty cool. Uh, so a little, just a little bit about me. Uh, one of the things that we do a lot in our, in our little end of the world here is a lot of work in the prophetic and a lot of work in deliverance ministries. Uh, that's how we connected in with you, Lana, as you know, all those years ago and uh, all these years later. Uh, we just continue to minister in the lives of people all over uh, all over Australia. And it's such a privilege and an honour uh, to see God at work you know, through the lives and hearts of people. It's a privilege and an honour to bring people to places of hope and healing. And that's yeah. very much my heart, is just to, to see people come to that fullness in, in Christ and to, just to know him in a tangible way and just about to lead people in that yeah, and so for the last um, couple of years I've been teaching the prophetic uh, particularly the pr prophetic voice of God and uh, helping people not only just listen to the voice of God but to test it and uh, we've seen some really significant breakthroughs in lots of different denominations in and around around Sydney uh, where people are just just like they're hungry but them, they're eager. I think eager is an even better word than hungry. They're yeah. eager for more of what God is speaking. And so, yeah, part of my heart is just to really release that so people can um, just have that relationship with the Father. Yeah, that's awesome. And that's like, um, you know, those of you that have been reading words that I've been releasing, like I, I've really been prophesying this is a new era, you know, that God is doing something completely different and unlike anything we've ever seen. And I know just from talking with you, Matt, like what you've been seeing God doing is just like mind-blowing. Like it's just, it's incredible. And the Lord's really wanting to um, bring us higher as his people into that place of, yeah, hearing his voice. Mm. And uh, and I just love like cross denominational, right? Just like God is just, he's so, he's such a good father and he's so wanting to just draw us into that place of, hey, you know, I can hear his voice and, you know, I can hear his voice for me, but I can also hear his voice for somebody else. Um, so it's really exciting what, you know, I think God is leading us into and what he's doing and what he's about to do. Um, and you know, I just even preparing for this Facebook Live today, I was I was sitting with the Lord, and I, I just felt really strongly that um, there is going to be an impartation that God is going to release uh, to you, to those of you watching today, whether you're watching live or there's a, or you watch the replay. Um, I really feel like there's a fresh impartation from the Lord uh, to really just go deeper with him, to hear his voice, uh, but also to connect with his heart and to minister from that place. Um, so before we kind of dive into the 2019 thing, I was going to ask Matt, um, what do you believe that God is is saying right now? What what do you believe is um, is on the heart of God right now, and what the Spirit is saying? Yeah, that's that's such a beautiful question, Ella, and I I believe the church should be asking that question again and again and again. Uh, it's just. I believe that we have the ability to hear him speak and that's an individual thing. And so when God starts speaking, one of the things I love doing is listening to the Father heart voice through people. And uh, so lots of stuff that you put online, uh, just to see the thread of what God is speaking in and through your life. Uh, one of the things that I see that's so so true that you're, you're flowing in is such a purity and truth and just a real tangible faith. I think your words are grounded uh, very strongly, and I think that's what the Father is actually calling us into, to be grounded for our, uh, our lives with him, to be tangible, so, so that we can actually speak to other people to tell them what a life with Jesus actually looks like. 
And so yeah. what I'm really seeing a lot of now, and, and you hear it a lot around churches and a lot in the prophetic, uh, are these words of intimacy and vulnerability, um, transparency, honesty, uh, all of these things are very powerful words. And I, I, I hear them being spoken again and again and again. And they've been spoken like they are breakthroughs, as in we are discovering new places of vulnerability with the King of Kings. We are yeah. discovering new places of truth. We are discovering new places where, where God is taking us to where uh, we have not been before. And, and I think that's so much so, not just from a, a church perspective, it's right down to the heart of the human. And, and that yeah. God is just showing us again and again just his grace and his love. And as, yeah. as we tangibly feel that, it's something that becomes infectious to the people that are around us. And we find that they actually start getting caught up with the love that we're actually flowing in. And, and so this concept of uh, one of the things I teach is that you leak what you carry. And so whatever God is doing in you, it's bigger than who you are. And it's affecting the people that are around you. And, and that doesn't need to depend upon your mood or your circumstances. If God is doing a breakthrough in you, if God is loving on you, if God is bringing peace to you, if God is showing to you his grace, then the people around you are actually encountering what he's actually doing. And so I see God doing right now in the moment these these great acts of showing us and demonstrating and allowing us in these really deep places of his love. Yeah, and I, I totally agree with you. Like I, even while you were talking just then, I was thinking, you know, in the Song of Songs, um, in the Passion Translation, and friends, I'll try and find it later and actually type in the comments the, uh, the scripture, the actual reference. But in the Song of Songs, um, there's a there's a scripture that says let me see your face and let me hear your voice in prayer let me see your eyes and for so many years i'd read it and for some reason in my mind i thought oh yeah well that's me crying out to god and then one day i looked and i was like no hang on a second that's the lord saying to me i want to hear your voice in prayer how lovely your eyes in worship like that beautiful place of intimacy and i love what you said matt about vulnerability because I, I really feel that too i feel like there's a a move of the spirit of God right now to really melt down fears and melt down walls of things that have really hindered um, that place of intimacy, you know, that place of um, th whether it's through, you know, childhood or experience or whatever whatever it is that those areas of things that um, that really hinder that, that secret place. And I just, I love what you were saying, you know, that what, what God is doing in us is not just for me like it's for everybody else like it's for everybody i encounter and i think you know i've been hearing god saying all over and over again you are powerful and he's been decreeing it um over the church like you know because hang on does that mean when i go and grab my coffee from my favorite coffee shop and i'm connecting with the barista like that is a moment where i can share the love of jesus whether i use words or not you know like just and I, I really resonate with that, that, that God is awakening us to that place of, um, of his love and deeper, that place of vulnerability, you know, where we, we see the foxes that are trying to raid our vineyard, you know, and we, we catch them with the Lord and whatever he's pouring in, then we're going to release. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, I just, I love that. And, you know, I'll say this and then I'm going to hand back to you, Matt. I had a dream last year and um, I was lying on the, the ground outside on the earth and I had my ear to the ground and the Lord was saying, can you hear the sound of revival? Can you hear the sound? And I was mm. listening to the sound in the earth, but the sound that was, that was filling the earth was the sound of love. It was the fire of God's love that was spreading across the earth. And mm. I just, I feel like we are so in that place right now um, and I, I want to prophesy over those of you watching that if fear, uh, condemnation, shame, whatever it is that has hindered your relationship with God, I want to prophesy right now uh, in the name of Jesus, radical encounters with his love where you're going to see uh, those things melt away. Like as big as the giant that's been screaming at you, greater is the encounter with his love that's waiting for you, that God has set up. Uh, he's already, you know, sent the eviction notice to that thing. And, and really there's going to be a, a beautiful, deeper place of intimacy and vulnerability with God, you know, like you hear um, that word into me, you see, you know, just that deep place of intimacy where you will see the Father with his arms wide open, not standing there going, well, you didn't dot all your I's and cross all your T's today. 
but just delighted in you for who you are because you're his, that he delights in you not for what you do but for who you are. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so I just I think that's so beautiful, man, and you've so articulated perfectly, I think, you know, the heart of God right now. Um, can I ask, have there been any specific... Uh, can you share a few testimonies, like of things, ways that you've seen uh, breakthroughs in this last year? I guess of yeah. what you've been sharing. Yeah. You know, one of the there's lots of when you're working, I guess, like in the fields that we are, you you gain people from every corner of the, the Christian kingdom at times. And one of the beautiful breakthroughs that I've watched over the last 18 months, in particular, is the way denominational barriers are coming down. And people are willing, more than willing, uh, wanting and desiring for the kingdom to actually operate in unity. Uh, and, yeah. and when people come and gather, they're not coming gathering as Baptists or they're not coming as Pentecostals or they're not coming as brethren, or they're just coming as believers in Christ, lovers of Christ. And, and what I've discovered is that's our agenda and that's where we, 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 we uh, sort of kick off from. Uh, things of denominational issue or secondary theological statements become very much uh, in the shadow of who Christ is and, and what his voice is saying. And, and so, like, I've ministered way across denominations uh, that have connected in together and people have been in the same services and they've thought they've been in a Baptist church and all of a sudden they've discovered they're sitting next to somebody from a Brethren church and another person from a from Hillsong and another person from an Anglican church. And all of a sudden, it's like a joy just erupts when they realize that we are one. We yes. are. And, and so one of the, and it was a series of testimonies of kingdom and I keep speaking it out. And so when I when I go to people's churches and whatnot, I ask, and people always ask me, how's your church? How's your church going? And my statement to that is, well, it's the same church as yours. So how's yours going? And so, because we are one church, we are one kingdom. And we might meet in different parts of the world and might meet in different parts of Sydney or New South Wales or Australia, but we are one church. And so how is the church? The church is growing. The kingdom is growing. The kingdom cannot shrink. Why? Because when God's at work, things are happening that are transforming and changing and bringing us to redemption, transformation and renewal. I just believe that is such a thing. I have people saying to me that, Matt, the church is shrinking. Uh, and it could be that churches are shrinking, but I'm telling you this, the kingdom is not because people, uh, and this is again another wave of what I believe that people are looking for, they are looking for real. They are looking for, for a God that changes lives and they're not looking just for one moment of greatness. Uh, they are looking uh, for a transform transformation that takes them from where they were to where they are to where they are going, going to be. Uh, and, and so, like, I, I was sitting down this past uh, couple of weeks with a, a group from a, a Brethren Church, and they're now talking about how can we actually put a healing and deliverance ministry into our church. So good. Wow. It's so good. It's absolutely so good. And, and you listen to that and you hear the hunger and the desire uh, for people yeah. to, to go, okay, this is where we were, but we can see what God is doing right now. I see that in Baptist churches along with my own. Uh, at times people come into my church and they say, hey, this is not a Baptist church. And I say, hey, it's just an expression of church. And, and wherever we are, there's this eagerness for people to come and, and to sit and to feast. And, and so there's lots of things. And so like even yesterday, I was sitting with a young girl who's going back to Finland today. And, uh, and she's going back and she's going, I'm really concerned. I'm not going to be able to find a place or a church where I'm going to be able to be at home. And I could be alone there. And I said to her, you're not alone. Uh, why? Because God has got you at the right time in the right place. And you're heading back into Finland today for such a time as this. And if that's true, which I believe it is, then uh, God is going to be raising up others that are there in Finland. So look out Finland. Look out for what God's about to do in Finland, right? Just because one person has had an expression and encounter with God that's transformed and changed her over the last 12 months to a point where she's going back now eager to hear what what God is what, what God is doing. Uh, so there's, there's lots of expressions of, of what God God is doing in and through lots of different denominations. And I just think with some of the moves of the Holy Spirit that we're actually seeing. Yep, there's some pushback too. And I think there's always going to be pushback. Every single time anyone wants to stand up and say, hey, I believe God's doing something, there's always going to be some pushback. And you know what? That's okay too because that actually tests us and that just tests our resolve and that tests what we're hearing and listening for from God too. And so what we're seeing as well is not just people willing to hear God, but they go, okay, Matt, 
how is it you're actually testing his voice? How is it you're actually going, is that really God? Did, did God really say that to me? Did God really show me that picture? And so it's slowing people down a little bit and just going, okay, God can speak to us in lots of different ways. And and you, you know me, uh, Lana, I teach uh, God speaking through the Bible. I teach God speaking through dreams, visions, and creation in your imagination. There's lots of different ways of hearing the voice of God. And, and so people are, are time and time again are going, this is actually a thing. This is a thing. I never thought the dream interpretation was a thing. Um, yeah. I tell you, I've got one lady in my church. I think she's about 75 years old. And yeah. uh, when she uh, came and did the training with me, uh, she's this. Um, she dreams like she's on steroids. She has dreams all the time. And, and she and I said to her, "Have you got a dream diary?" And she said, "I've been keeping a dream diary for decades." And she comes and brings me this book that's so old that it looks like you've got to wear white gloves to actually hold this thing. Uh, wow. And we're teaching her how to interpret dreams. And she gets wow. up in front of church and she goes, "For 50 years, I've been asking God to speak to me, and I've oh. just realised He's been speaking to me for 50 oh. years." It was so, I was crying and thinking about it. It's so moving to see what God is doing. And so she stands up in front of my church and she says, I'm 75 years old. It's a new day and I'm a dreamer. And so again, uh -huh. seeing God do this again and again and again. Uh, is that enough testimonies? Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> That's amazing. That is amazing. And like, friends, I want you to hear that. Like, you know, I just, I so, I just, even when Matt shares that, I'm like, I so feel that, you know, like that there is such an awakening right now, like to um, to hearing his voice and, and discovering like, wow, like I actually have been hearing from God, like God has been speaking to me, you know, and I just, I want to just decree over any of you that are watching that if there's been a lie um, that has been plaguing you that says you don't hear God, you can't hear God, I just want to break the, the power of that lie right now in the name of Jesus, because I just, as Matt was sharing, I just, I felt the, the weightiness of God's presence, just like he wants to awaken you to show you the ways that he's going to speak to you and he has been speaking to you sorry and he's going to speak to you in new and fresh ways in this new era um and i love what you were saying matt just about you know the denominations and how you know you've got someone from like the brethren church and the hillsong like all these different denominations coming together and um i i just want to say like i so agree with that and I've been prophesying for a long time that in this new era, God is going to move in some of the most unexpected ways and unexpected places, you know. And um, and even this week, uh, I had an encounter with the Lord and he was showing me some of the driest places on the planet, some of the driest churches and people were looking at them going, oh, well, nothing good's going to come out of there. And suddenly the spirit of God was just crashing in and moving and like breakthrough, miracles, signs, wonders, a move of his spirit was taking place. And I just... I really feel that right now. So I, I want to just decree that, that um, the Lord is going to really move. Um, he already is, but he's going to move in greater ways uh, in this new era of breaking down those denominational walls. And, and you know, Bill Johnson calls, uh, one of the names he has for the Lord is Jehovah Sneaky. And I love that because, you know, the Lord, that's his heart. You know, like what we think is um, is limited to us, it's not for God, and uh, and it's already begun. As you can, you know, hear from what Matt's sharing, it's already begun, but it's about to gain even more momentum. You know that we are the body of Christ. We're brothers and sisters in Christ. You know, and that we are, um, you know, we're we're on the same team, right? We're all <laughs> here for Jesus. You know, we're all here for to see His kingdom extended and to see His glory. Uh, you know, all across the earth, and it's just the beginning. It really is just the beginning. And so I want to just prophesy over um, those of you watching that, you know, the best really is yet to come. It's not a cliche kind of like something that you stick on the, the bumper sticker of your car or, you know, you buy a nice bookmark. It really is the truth. You know, what God is doing right now is unlike anything that we've ever seen before, but it's, it's going to accelerate in significant ways. Um, and I want to just say this, and then I'm going to hand back to Matt. While Matt was sharing I think um, at one point, Matt, you said something. Um, oh, are you were talking about breaking down denominational walls and relationships or something. But anyway, but all of a sudden I had a vision and I saw um, the phone ringing 
And all of a sudden I saw many people picking up this phone and it, the phone was ringing and there was a restoration of relationship. And so I want to prophesy over those of you watching that if there's a, a relationship that um, has broken down for whatever reason uh, and you're believing for a restoration, I prophesy right now that the phone's going to ring. I just saw phones ringing and, and as you answered the phone, uh, the Lord was beginning a healing work. So don't, uh, don't despair over uh, impossibilities in relationships. I just I really feel the heart of God right now that you're going to see some miracles in relationships being restored uh, in the name of Jesus. The phone call is going to come out of nowhere and you're going to see a beautiful restoration of, of unity and of healing and of freedom in your relationship. So keep believing, friends, for whether you're watching live now or you watch the replay. If you're like, yeah, that's me, um, take hold of it by faith because I, I saw that really clearly in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Uh, so, Matt, let's dive into 2019. Yeah. What, um, can you share some things of what you feel like God has been speaking to you about next year, what you're yeah. feeling on your heart? Yeah, there's, there's so many thoughts that um, I have for 2019 uh, and, and so much of the way that I, I help people understand uh, like even future telling, you've got to understand where you've come from to know where you are, to understand yeah. where God's pointing you. And so often we come to our Christian walk and we go, okay, the old life is gone, and we try as if we start from scratch. But you know what? There's so many things that come from where we've been that show us the authority of the things that we have uh, and, the, and the authority that we walk in. And so as you're now prophesying to people over restoration of relationships, uh, mm -hmm. there's going to be and that's going to happen like I believe that's going to happen uh, Christmas is one of those crazy times at families where uh, restoration and reconciliation at some times gets thrown out the window but I want to reverse that and, and prophesy oh, yeah. over it this Christmas time some of the gifts that people that are listening right now are going to receive is, is a gift of love that's going to connect them back into the father heart Mm -hmm. uh, connect them back into the relationship with, with family, connect them back into relationship with sons and daughters and, and brothers and sisters, connect them back into relationships that they've even forgotten about. And I just really believe that once they see that and they and they, they understand that, they'll have then an authority to speak that into other people. And, and so, Lana, knowing some of your walk and knowing some of your own declarations, I know where you've been and I know the authority that you stand in. And so when you start declaring over 2019, you can hear your heart, you can hear the authority in it, and every single person who's listening to this has a heart to, to stand in a place of authority. Uh, I don't know what it's like in other places around the world, but people are saying, oh, I need to stand on a platform to do that. I just want to say to everyone listening, you've actually got a platform. It's the same platform that I stand on. It's the same platform that Lana stands on. It's the platform that Jesus called us to, and on that platform, we're called to do one thing, and that is to love to love well and to love generously and to love abundantly. And, and so if you want to put any kind of paradigm around 2019 and you don't include the word love, then you are not putting the paradigm of Christ around what we're actually about to talk about and where we're about to head. And so this concept of love, and you and you, you kind of feels like a crap record with me at times because people keep coming back to it. Now, what's the secret? What's the key? What's the, And like the key, one of the keys for me, and like you spoke about, and thank you for the gracious words you said at the top there, Lana. One of the keys that I believe that God has given to me is a key to the kingdom. It's a key that I think that he gives to everybody. And I'm happy to be proved wrong on that one. But it's the key of love. Yeah. If you use that key, yeah. if you use that key and love people, uh, there seems to be this divine direction where they allow you into deeper parts of, of their heart. And when they allow you into deeper parts of their heart, you're able to, to traverse uh, some of those really tricky moments and those really awkward conversations. But what you're doing is you're carrying a love that the Bible says drives away fear, drives it away. And that we have to, as a church, we've got to believe that that's actually a real thing or a fairy tale. I don't believe it's a fairy tale. I believe it's a truth. And so when I'm loving, when I'm loving on people, what I'm actually doing is driving fear away. Why? Because God is love. God yeah. is love and God is within. Yeah. So 2019 for, for me, um, is wrapped around, if I can use that, I know it's broad, but for each and every relationship and each and every one of our lives, there 
is a way to love, there's a place to love, and, and there's this beautiful place to love. And so one of the words that God has given to me for 2019 is this word safety. And so when we love, we create safe places around people's lives so that they can be who they are. Uh, one of the repetitive phrases I've heard over 2018 is Christians saying to me, I don't know who I am. And I think that's a break. Just yeah. get a break. In. Yeah. I, I just think that's a heartbreak when, when people don't know who they are in God. I just see. Yeah. No. So, anyway, <clears throat> what I believe for is this concept of if we create a safe place in, the, in, that, in that realm, then all of a sudden, if God is love. He gives us these things to speak into people's lives. And, and to touch those places that bring healing and restoration and renewal and breakthrough. Now, you know, in the word you released yesterday, you spoke about a divine destiny. And I would really believe for that in the when you, when you wrap that with love around it. It's just this concept that all of a sudden the future starts becoming seen. And you can actually start yeah. future telling. Because if you're going to yeah. choose to love someone in the future, you're actually choosing a behavior that you're, you're going to be joining in with them. And all of a sudden you're creating this beautiful place for Jesus just to be Jesus. And so if it's yeah. like feeding your barista down at your local coffee place, yeah. uh, it's engaging with him not at an order level, but at a heart yeah. level. And yeah. you're actually speaking love and life into him uh, from that level. Yeah. And so 2019 for me looks a whole lot like a, a whole bunch of relationships that are now structuring themselves around this concept of, of loving. Yeah. And, and the word love for me, um, the word love, I think it's a Greek sort of con context where it goes back to the place of investing. And so yeah. as I love on people, I invest. Yeah. I just believe that for, for the, the year that's ahead of us, and you talk about divine breakthroughs, and you talk about beyond what we can hope, dream, think, or imagine, uh, yeah. when, we're, when we're loving, we get to see a world that God yeah. sees. We yeah. get to see a world of such brilliant potential and such brilliant hope mm -hmm. and, and such brilliant promise. And, and it's like it's just God's just going, how good is this? And he's encouraging yeah. us into it. Uh, so I don't know about you, but I was raised in a very conservative background. And at times it mm. felt like condemnation was more the church's voice. Uh, I'm just yeah. so much believing that 2019, that God is not a God of condemnation. The Bible says he didn't come here to condemn us. He came here to, to save us. Uh, the Bible yeah. speaks about that he has made us clean. The Bible in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, I think it is, talks about how he no longer holds the sin against people. And he looks to us now as as his creation and, and the ones that he is transforming and creating into his son's very image. Uh, yeah. And so the concept inside of that is this beautiful uh, understanding of that when you love people, you are being God to them. Yeah. People say to me, you know, how, do you, how do you see God? And, and I know this, this might sound a bit cheesy to some people, but every single time you love, you can see God. Yeah. Every single time you love, yeah. you can see God. That's just straight out of 1 John chapter 4. God is love. That's who yeah. he is. That's his definition. Yeah. That's his character. That's what he does. So every time you pour love on somebody else, yeah. God's actually there. God's actually doing something. So 2019, uh, Lana, um, I don't know if this has answered your question, but it's very much where my heart uh, beats and it's very much where my heart at times aches. Uh, and I just so much want to be a person of God that actually brings um, his love uh, to the world mm -hmm. in ways that continue to boggle my brain. You know, when the disciples mm -hmm. often left amazed by Jesus, uh, people yeah. say we should not be amazed because God can do everything. But heck, God yeah. can do anything that he does, right? And every time yeah. I love, there's something about it that just spurs me on. And so, yeah, so 2019, uh, there's a year of breakthrough and love is going to be that key that I think that the church has been so freely given and so freely open to uh, that will unlock yeah. the hearts. Yeah, I so resonate with that. I really do. And I I think, um, you know, when you were saying for so long that the church has, you know, had a voice like the sound, I guess, of condemnation, um, I really resonate with what you were saying about, you know, that sound changing, the sound of love. You know, it's it's beginning and it's going to increase. It's going to resound even louder. You know, and even while you were talking, I was just seeing, you know, even 
some of the, you know, in our, you know, I guess um, sometimes if we're viewing people not through the lenses of how God views them, you can see someone and go, wow, like it looks impossible that they would ever come to know Jesus. And just as you were sharing, I was like, wow, like I just kept seeing like love, like the, the Holy Spirit through through his people, loving others, just finding that place in people's hearts. You know, the most unexpected, you go, oh my gosh, I don't know when they're going to get saved. That looks impossible. And then suddenly the love of Jesus was just finding a way in through the hands and feet of his people. And suddenly people were coming to know Jesus. And, you know, um, God has told me so much about, you know, this new era. And one thing he, I keep seeing is just prodigals running home. Like just, like, I'm not talking one or two, like thousands upon thousands of prodigals running home, but it's exactly what you shared, Matt. It's the love of the Father. It's the love of God. Um, and, you know, just even your encouragement to people watching about platforms and, um, and just that, you know, we all have the same platform, you know, that, Wherever we go, we yeah. extend the kingdom of God and His love. Um, yeah, you know, Lana, yeah. when, we were, when we were down at Awakening Australia, we yeah. saw, we witnessed people sprinting to Jesus, yeah. like yeah. sprinting to Jesus, yeah. and and yeah. it was just with hundreds of people, and you could yeah. see what God is doing and breaking into people's lives and and drawing them into relationship with Him. You can see it yeah. absolutely see it. Yeah, yeah. And I, I want to prophesy over any of you watching right now. Um, I just had this vision and I saw um, a whole group of people and they were sitting there thinking you were looking at family members and um, people that you're believing for to come into the kingdom. But I saw um, many of you, you may be watching now or later, uh, sitting there going uh, like, I don't really have much of an impact. Like, I don't really, I don't, you know, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to reach out. Like, I just, uh, I'm scared. Like, I don't know. And there's, I just saw this, like, um, it was the word, like, it was like an insignificance. It was like, oh, I'm not really having much of an effect. Like, my life's not really that powerful. Like, that's that was the feeling. But I, I want to prophesy to you right now that God is actually doing more through you, uh, impacting those people that you're believing for to come into the kingdom and to know Jesus than you realize that the Lord is actually using you powerfully as you continue to just walk in who you are, what you've been called to, and just be love and just speak life. I just want to really speak over you that encouragement right now that um, don't listen to the lies of the enemy where he comes and, you know, tries to discourage and say, you know, you're not having any sort of effect. I just really want to prophesy over you right now that God is actually moving through you uh, more than you realize that there's going to be significant demonstrations uh, in 2019 of how God is moving and using you and drawing those people in that, you know, whether you're believing for a prodigal to come home whatever the, the circumstance, the relationship is, I just felt the Father's heart really strongly to encourage you that he's actually using you more profoundly than you realise. And, you know, yesterday this, I was talking to Matt about this before uh, when I, we were texting Matt and I said, you know, the word I released about strategy yesterday and there were divine strategies. One thing that I... Uh, just as I sat with the Lord today, I really felt like the Lord wants to release strategies on, I know it probably sounds a bit weird, but on practical ways to love people. And, you know, and keys, the Lord wants to release keys to people and to us of loving people really well. You know, like the amount of times I've been, you know, washing the dishes and the Lord says to me, buy somebody this, or he'll say, pay for the person's coffee behind you, or whatever it is, just those little moments of, they're not major life-changing to me, divine strategies, but they're those moments of connection with the heart of God to release his love. And so I just um, want to encourage people, like, keep asking the Lord, we all need to be asking, you know, God, teach me in greater ways how to love, teach me um, give me strategies on how to be generous and how to reflect your light, your love, your generosity, your kindness in my everyday life with my family, my husband. Like, teach me how to be a blessing. How to, you know what I mean? Like, I just, I really feel that, um, you know, that strategy doesn't need to be a big, like, blueprint of, it, it can be, of this is what I'm going to do. 
but also in the day-to-day, -day, in the loving people. Lord, show me. Um, and one other thing, and then I'm going to ask Matt um, if he has anything else to share and to pray, but one thing when Matt was sharing, he mentioned Ephesians 3.20. And um, I'd been prophesying that for a long time, but then a few, about a year and a half ago, the Lord said to me, now I want you to look at the verses prior to Ephesians 3.20. And what does it talk about? It talks about the love of God. It talks about, you know, the depth of his love. I think it's from verse 17. Um, and so when Matt was sharing, I, I had this vision and I saw the Lord um, calling us deeper into that place of intimacy and we were going deep into the depths like like scuba diving and I knew that we were in the like going deeper and deeper and deeper in his love but get this the deeper we went I saw these glasses on us and Jesus was adjusting the lenses and I felt like the Lord wanted me to prophesy over you that there are not only significant encounters with him upon you in this new era with his love and you know we can't even comprehend you know, the, the, the height, the depth, the width, the breadth of his love. Yeah. But I want to prophesy over you that God is going to um, increase your perspective and he's going to shift your perspective to see through the lenses of love, to see through his eyes and how he sees in greater ways that you will look at someone or something, a, a nation, a city, whatever it is, but you will see even more clearly through his eyes, the eyes of love, that no matter what's going on, that the Lord is uh, continually readjusting our lenses, that anything that is uh, fogged up the lenses, that God is really going after those things, that we will be people that really call out the gold, that even if we see something dark, we see what the enemy's doing, we see sin in someone's life, whatever it is, that we are not people that throw stones, right, that we are people that look and we prophesy and speak the redemptive solution that we actually call out the gold of who people are in Christ and what God has called them to. So all that to say, um, Matt, is there anything else um, that you feel in your heart you'd like to share? Uh, otherwise, we, we can pray. Uh, just a couple of things, then, if that's okay to, to do that. Um, you, you told me you can give me a timeout when you think. No, that, no, no. Uh, <laughs> when that's enough, right? When, yeah. when people are hearing for the voice of God, often fear will present very very strongly to say, is that really God? Can that really be yeah. God? When you go back into the Garden of Eden, it's the same statement that Satan brought to Eve. And did God really say, could God really have said that? Uh, yeah. And all of a sudden, human destiny changes because we start reasoning with the devil. Uh, mm -hmm. When you're listening for the voice of the Lord, like often it's easy to, to go... Um, to go is safe on that and just think, no, no, it can't be God, it can't be God. I must tap into Lana to hear God. That's not how, I know that's not how you work, Lana, that's not how I work. Um, and even the book that you've just released, which is absolutely incredible, uh, just demonstrates how you battled through at times that, that fear and overwhelm. That overwhelmed you at yeah. times, but you overcame, you overcame it. Uh, fear will always try and rise up against God's voice. Uh, fear shrinks your world, faith grows yeah. your world. Uh, yeah. And so uh, love grows your world. Every time you love, your world actually gets a little bit bigger. Uh, every time you fear, your world gets a little bit smaller. Now, I know they're, they're big uh, generalisations. I don't mean to offend anyone by saying that sort of stuff um, because there's reasons why fear is such a voice in so many people's lives. But at the same time, we've got to be a kingdom of believers that know that his love is greater than fear. Amen. Not only just greater, and like I said before, just quoting scripture, his love drives away fear. And we've got to live from that paradigm rather than the what ifs. What if I do something wrong? What if I do this? What if? As soon as we start um, reasoning with those what ifs, it's like we, we start talking with the devil. And that's not something God has, has called us into. I just so much believe in that. And I just want to you know, just declare over people on, on this uh, broadcast too that the, the concepts of fear, even now, as Lana and I are talking, we'll be going, oh, that was good for Lana, or that's good for Matt. Don't don't think like that. There are breakthroughs of love in each of your lives that are so unique that Lana and I can't get our brains around them, and we want to hear them. We want to hear your stories because your voice is so important to the kingdom of God. It's not only important, it's necessary. And, and that's where I, I think for the next 12 months is this 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 place where everyone knows that God is speaking to them and through them, in them and through them. 
and, and once yeah. everyone starts speaking, I, I had this beautiful vision line where I had a service recently where uh, I was leading a, a prophetic service and I, and I had the drums prophesy and uh, my son just goes nuts on the drums and, and, and yeah. he's prophesying on the drums. And then I, at the end of it, I said, okay, church, what, what did we hear God speaking? And like yeah. dozens of people's voices started being spoke, speaking back and I had this beautiful vision that the platform in the church had reversed and now it was the church speaking God's voice. It didn't have to come from the platform, it just came from the body of Christ. And so I see that coming uh, for the next 12 months, next yeah. 12 months as well. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I totally agree. Like, that's just amazing. You know, I really, I, I so, I so resonate with that. I really, I just, gosh, I really feel like, yeah, the voice of God's people as well is being restored, that any, any lies like you've shared or any fears, anything that would, you know, try and muzzle us. Um, yep. But those things are going to be removed. You know, yeah. that, I love what you said. Your voice is needed. Like it's it's crucial. It's you know that every voice. Yeah. Yeah, and because everyone's story is, is unique, and, and yeah. so the way that Jesus touches the person next to you is different to you. And that's yeah. that's testimony. That's story. That's celebration. That's joy. That's that's just every part of that is just awesome. And, and yeah. you could be investing in listening to what Jesus is doing in and through. Lives. Yeah, yeah, and I, I love that. I really do. And it's just, and that's, you know, isn't it such a beautiful place as well of, of love when we we celebrate some, like somebody else's story, you know, that we, we look at someone else and go, wow, like look what God has done, look what he's doing in your life and, you know, and coming alongside people and just, yeah, really loving them and, and just being yeah. that that voice of encouragement and celebration to others. I think it's, yeah, it's so important. You know, Lana, yesterday I was sitting, and I think she's listening, her name is Kirsty. She gave me a vision yesterday and she yeah. said, said to me, um, Matt, I can see you as a candle and uh, and you, it's like you're lighting other candles and it's spreading across a nation. Wow. Every single believer who desires to sit at the feast table of the king Yes. Has that candle in their hands. And yeah. wherever you go today, tomorrow, the day after, you're actually taking that light with you. And yes. so the prophecy that was given to me, I just want, I, I received it and loved it and thank the Lord for it. And Kirsty's yeah. awesome. But at the same time, I just want to share that with each person here. You hold the fire of God in your hands. You hold yeah. it, you carry it, and it's designed to grow, it's designed to spread. It's not designed to shrink and it's not designed to be put out. So what, yeah. what God is doing inside of you, do not be discouraged if you're going through a very difficult season. Don't be discouraged, mm -hmm. as David would say, in that valley of the dark shadow. Uh, know mm -hmm. that as David did, he focused on the feast table that was at the end of the valley. And when he got there, the Bible says he feasted in full view of his enemies. Yeah. I love that. It's so safe oh. and so powerful and so protective for that love to be served. Yes, that's awesome. I love that. And, you know, even before we jumped on this broadcast, I quickly jumped on Facebook to just say to everybody, hey, we're going to be on in 15 minutes or whatever it was. And the post below my status box was actually a post, a photo of a candle lighting another candle. And it was actually saying, um, I can't remember exactly, so I can't quote it properly, but it was basically like your light doesn't go out when you light somebody else's candle. Like it was exactly like the, the picture that you just described. So that's just, isn't the Lord amazing the way that he, he confirms, the way he speaks? It's just yeah. it's so good, man. So good. Yeah, so, so good. Well, friends, um, we are going to just pray for you, I think. Um, I really just, I felt like at the, uh, the end of this, just uh, to ask Matt if he would pray over everybody. Um, and just uh, release what what he has already released, but just to seal all of that. But I just I want to just encourage everybody. You know, everything that we've kind of chatted about, that we've shared, that Matt shared. If something has really grabbed you, like that is exactly where I'm at. That's exactly what I'm feeling right now. I just want to encourage you to just continue to be intentional. You know, continue to grab hold of by faith what you've heard and be like, yes, I'm going to go after this. 
um, as many of you may have um, you know, read, I've been really prophesying the, the ferocious focus of faith. And I'm feeling this, this urgency, not in a, a negative way, in, a, in an, excite, an exciting way of really the heart of God saying, engage with what I'm saying, like engage with, with what I'm speaking because I want to release more to you than, than you've ever carried before. And so I just want to leave that with you just as a, a reminder and just as a key that um, be intentional with the things that you've heard today. You're like, yep, that's mine. Uh, hold on to it and decree it, pray it, meditate on it but just really engage because I feel like from uh, this broadcast, but nothing to do with Matt and I, it's all about um, with the Lord and what he's doing. Uh, but I just, I feel like there's going to be a ripple effect breakthrough. I just kept seeing like we threw out a little stone and then there's all these ripples that are going to be, um, that are going to be seen from this place. So just continue to engage. Um, if you have to play it back, play it back again. Uh, but, yeah, I just want to bless all of you and um, and thank you for joining us. It's been really fun. Um, but, Matt, would you pray uh, for all of the viewers, those that are watching now and those that will watch later? Yeah, absolutely. Um, absolutely. So when I pray, I just want to engage, encourage everyone to engage just with the prayer and just to invite Jesus into the room where they are. Mm. Knowing that Jesus is there, believing that he's there, just use your imagination to invite Jesus into the room with you. Mm. Allow him to minister to you. Allow him to speak to you. Maybe he just wants to hold you. Maybe he wants to put a hand over you and pray. And some of the, many of the comments are, I've just been watching so many families going through uh, separation and so many uh, mm. marriages that are in turmoil right now. Mm. Just really believe just the love of Jesus wants to pour upon every one of those marriages and wants to see hope and redemption come into every one of those marriages. And so, Jesus, would you just reach in and pick up the cord that goes between husband and wife? And even if people have got a fantastic marriage, I just want to just praise you for that too. But, Lord, I just want to pray for those marriages that are really struggling at this time. Uh, Jesus, that you'll pick up that cord and just let your love just flow down through it into the hearts of that family and I pray Lord that this Christmas it will be a miracle where something shifts inside the spirits to open up those places of vulnerability and honesty and just such deep wells of love. Uh, so Father I want to pray that the churches that we're a part of they will become to these deep wells of love and it'll be like Jesus when you met the Samaritan woman in John chapter 4. Uh, you just met her where she was at and just loved on her, just cared for her and you brought her to that place of of transformation and change. Just like you met Zacchaeus up a tree and you invited him to have dinner. I pray, Father, that in so many people's lives that there'll be invitations that are issued to have coffee or to have meals and just to sit down and just to love so richly and abundantly. Uh, there's just one name that's that was in that feed. Her name is Rebecca. I think it was Rebecca Lee. And she's saying prayers needed. And I just want to just lift up Rebecca to you right now, God, and just want to pray that your grace will just rest over her and whatever that need is. I just want to ask, Lord, that you might, the, the treasures of heaven, that you'll show her that they are hers and that you are right there with her. And, Lord, that there'll be something more that you'll just add into her spirit and life and, and bring um, such redemptive power into her walk. I think uh, there's another girl who's listening. Her name's Jackie Ford, and her dad's not well. I just want to speak into that, Jesus, that you are the creator of all things. And, and Lord, we thank you for Jackie's dad and just want to pray love all over him and that today uh, wherever he is that the love of Jesus will just come and just overwhelm him and empower him and I want to pray that your love will just uh, uh, leak from him all over the people that are around him and Jesus there'll be such a healing work that's done in Jackie's bed today. I want to say thank you Father for all those that are wanting to hear your voice more and, and Lord I want to pray that this Christmas time will be a time where um, well Lord we just say our ears are open and our eyes are ready and we just want to see what you're doing and to hear what you're doing. And so, Jesus, your word tells us that uh, you, you do what you see the Father in heaven doing. So, Lord, right now, uh, in this time of prayer, I want to pray that you'll open up our imaginations to see what the Father in heaven is doing and that we can just partner with that. Mm -hmm. The Father in heaven is love, his grace, his kindness. Mm -hmm. He's full of generosity. And I just want to pray, Father, that the things that you are doing that you'll reveal yourself in such new and deep ways to the people who are watching this and being a part of this and like right where they are, Jesus, that your love will be poured down upon them. 
Father, I want to give a thanks out for just for Lana and just thank you for her vulnerability and her faithfulness to you. And Jesus, she serves the, your kingdom so so graciously and so generously. And, and right now I want to stand with everyone watching and just say thank you, Jesus, for the work that you have done in and through her life. I thank you for Kevin, her husband. I thank you for three brilliant boys. And I want to pray, Jesus, this Christmas time for them will be one that is utterly abundant. And, Lord, that there will be such love and laughter at that Christmas table. Uh, so, Lord, I just want to say thank you for this opportunity to pray into so many people's lives and just want to honour you in this moment. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Matt. Um, I just want to say for those of you watching, I just, um, while Matt was praying, I had a vision. Um, so I'm just going to put it out there. And if it's you, um, I just want to encourage you with this. Uh, but I kept hearing um, people crying out to the Lord saying, God, what's the answer? God, what's the answer? And there was a question that has just been bugging you and you've been asking the Lord for an answer for different circumstances uh, in your life and you haven't heard anything yet. And while Matt was praying, um, I had a vision and I saw Jesus walking into bedrooms in the night hours and he came and he placed his hand upon hearts and he released the impartation and he said, this is the answer. And suddenly there was just this great awakening to the answer that you've been waiting for. So I want to prophesy over you right now uh, in the name of Jesus that um, keep believing Keep waiting on the Lord because the answer is coming. The Lord has heard your prayers. Uh, you are not forgotten. The situation that's concerning you is not forgotten. The relationship that's weighing on your heart, is the Lord hasn't forgotten. Uh, but the, the answer is coming, that there is going to be significant revelation uh, in dreams, visions. God's going to wake you up in the middle of the night with a scripture. The answer is coming in the night hours. So I just want to release that right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Matt. What an honour to um, to have you on. Thank you for sharing your heart uh, with us, with me, and with everybody watching. I just honour you for just your your faithfulness to God, the way you stewards the world He's given you, your humility, your integrity, your purity. We just we love you, and I'm just so thankful that you would have coffee with me or tea, in my case, <laughs> and uh, everybody else around the world. So yeah. coffee all the way, Lana. Just, yeah, that's right. We wish you a Merry yeah. Christmas and just praying that God's blessings will be meeting you at every moment. Amen. Thank you. And to you guys too. Mm -hmm. Well, guys, we love you guys. Thank you for joining us. It was great to be with you again. Uh, like I said, um, there will be two Facebook Lives coming up. One, uh, I think on the 29th, uh, I'm going to be doing one and then a few days later uh, with two special guests uh, around the strategy of heaven and 2019. So keep your eyes peeled. The uh, little Facebook reminder thing should come out this week sometime. But we just love you guys and we bless you and we thank you for joining us. And uh, the replay will be available um, later, like in a few minutes, and you can share it and replay and watch whenever you want. So, all right. Bless you guys. We'll talk soon. Bye. All right, let me just end.